So today my speech is about knowledge. Um, as we know, not Islam places a high value on knowledge. Um, this is because uh, this is why we attend madrasas, mosques, and school. But uh, what I want to do uh, is uh, what I want to uh, do is explain to you why Islam has a fundamental uh, knowledge is so fundamental on Islam, whereas all three of the Abrahamic religion, Islam emphasizes knowledge the most. Um, do you know why Islam emphasizes knowledge the most? Is someone else, ladies? Okay. okay, so yeah, it embraces knowledge the most uh, a lot because like a lot of religions, that it's, like it's different to Islam. It's talking about peace and it's telling us that, like a lot of things we shouldn't do, which is good because like it's, it's making us not dumb people, it's us knowledgeable people, knowledgeable people, and like noble people. Um, yeah. The reason Islam, the reason we as Muslims are told to uh, learn knowledge is because our prophet, prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved Allah. 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 And his holy progeny are the owners of knowledge. Uh, they were given, they are endowed with knowledge. They were blessed with knowledge beyond comparison by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the question comes, how do we know this? How do we know that the Prophet and his uh, holy progeny were owners of knowledge? Where's the proof? Well, if you read the life of the Adam Bay, all there is is proof. Um, from the Prophet's statement, Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Ali Ubabaha to Imam Ali's announcement, Saluni Saluni Kibla Takbiduni on the day of his Khilafah. This is the proof we have. In their life, all they have given us is proof why they are owners of knowledge. Now. Now, having uh, examined, uh, examined the reason why knowledge is so valuable in Islam, um, we ask ourselves why should we gain knowledge? Why should we acquire knowledge? What's the benefit of acquiring knowledge? The benefits of acquiring knowledge is like um, it's good for you, so it'll make you a better person. But uh, I was also gonna say, if when you're acquiring knowledge, don't become arrogant. So like you're still a good person, and that's what Islam teaches us. Now, Imam Ali was once asked this question. Uh, the question was the benefits of knowledge or wealth. Although the question doesn't directly relate to the topic uh, I am uh, lecturing you about today, it still answers our question about the benefits of knowledge. Um, the uh, Imam Ali gave several answers about this, and some of which I will sh share with you today. Uh, one of which is uh, knowledge guards us, whereas we guard wealth. Now, what does this mean to you? Boss. That your knowledge will protect you in your time of need, and it will help you refrain from sin. But all we would do is try to protect our wealth, which will not help us in any way in the hereafter. Because, oh, because. Uh, it's because like we can't take worldly items to the heavens. We can only take the only thing we take from this world is our deeds. So that's why like uh, with the moms and the instrumentalists, I'm trying to say like don't hold, hold on to worldly things. Now, uh, seeing both Hassan and Pastor's answer, um, we know that knowledge can't uh, directly guard us because it's not a living being that can carry a weapon and protect us or keep us safe. But what knowledge can do is. Uh, if you say you are ill, uh, you can use your knowledge to find a cure. Or if someone else is ill, you can use your knowledge to help them. Now, Imam Ali gave another answer which said that knowledge creates friends, whereas wealth creates enemies. Now, going back to both the answers, we can say that knowledge creates friends which then guard you, but wealth creates enemies which then you have to guard. Lord Salawat. Now, knowledge, uh, we know, as I said, that knowledge uh, is very valuable in Islam, and I have also said why should, we should be gaining it. But now the question comes why should we use knowledge? Why should we use knowledge to help others, to help ourselves? Well, Imam Ali answered the question and said that. The more you use knowledge, the more it increases. Whereas the more you use wealth, 
the more it decreases. Now, understanding this statement, we can say that the, how the teachers at this madrasa, the more they use knowledge, the more they gain by reading more and uh, helping us read. And uh, another one of Imam Ali's answer was, uh, knowledge will stay even after your death, but wealth will de uh, whatever comes with wealth will decrease after it disappears. Disappear after it disappears. Now, what does this mean to you? That when we die, like we won't be able to take the wealth with us, but we will keep our knowledge, and that you know the knowledge will be the only thing that's kind of helping us. Our wealth, like th there'll be nothing worth money. Then money will be like nothing in the hereafter. And your deed will be like the money, basically. Now, seeing this uh, quote from Imam Ali, we question ourselves: How can knowledge stay behind in this world after we die? Because we were the one who had that knowledge, and when we left, the knowledge should let it leave as well. That's the most logical thing. So, but uh, looking at examples in history, we have seen Ibn Al Hashim, the fa father of opti modern optics. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, Al Khwarazi, Khwarazi, the father of algebra. We have seen Isaac Newton, uh, the one who discovered gravity. Their teachings have been taught centuries after their death. And this uh, is why we should learn knowledge. Now, my message for you today is that when we come to mosque, we should listen to our teachers and uh, learn knowledge rather than looping around. Because we know that Islam places a high value on knowledge. And uh, that knowledge is the greatest thing man can acquire. Thank you so much. Jazakallah.